You're listening to Fresh Waves, and I'm your host, Bren Masson. We have Angela Dacey in the station with us, in the Hello. studio with us this morning, and we're talking about color. Now, we're talking about the physiological and psychological effects of color. It's interesting. A human being is often drawn to a color mm-hmm. for no particular reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I can honestly say that my color preferences, my faves, have changed over the years. Yeah. I don't know whether that says something about the state of mind that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Green has always been my favorite color since I was a kid. I'm the only Mm. one who liked even the flavors of green. So I like the green lollipop. I never Uh. had to worry about the fight for the red one. I hate the red. And I red is one of my least favorite colors. I've noticed over the last... Maybe five or six years, Mm -hmm. I've started to pull reds into my life. Interesting. And although you probably will not see me wearing a a bright red jacket, okay, so I have my eye on a bright red jacket and someone said, this looks really nice with that blue and white dress and you need to have this jacket and I haven't been brave enough to actually Mm. embrace it. I, I just have to see. I was also told that Red makes my skin look green, which is kind of not a good look. (laughs) Glinda, however pretty she really is, and Alphaba, they can wear that kind of green thing. Uh, It's not not easy being good for me. It isn't. No. But I love your green top today. Thank you. She's got a gorgeous spring, awesome green top um, on. Fluorescent. But you know what? Yeah, I love it though. It's very springy. We're having a show on color. You gotta be dressed colorful. You gotta wear the jeans with the color around the the ankles. I know. And we're showing off our clothing here to people who are listening to the radio. It's so much fun. I must tell you though, I look great on the radio. Okay. Stunning. So, and you too, my dear. Oh, thank you. So, here we go. Little girls often, and I don't know whether it's from marketing and what they hear. A lot Mm -hmm. of it is, obviously. They all like their pink. Yep. And don't tell me little boys don't need self-love because they really do too. But we've got these little girls who like pink. Mm -hmm. Never was my favorite color. Never was a big thing when I was a kid. I liked my green. Right. Now, would that say that I was looking for love? It, it, greens and pinks are similar, but different. So think right. of pink as self-love. Right. Right. It's all about me. And little girls, it is all about them. Right. And, you know, like they're in their element between yes. like six to 12. It's all about them, man. So that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and they actually show us quite a bit that us women, I'm going to say women, because so many of us have issues with self-love as we get older. Right. That we need to sometimes go back to, Hey, you know what? What's this about for me? It's all about me. What do I need for self-care? Where green is all about, you're just such a nurturing, giving, loving person anyway that you just want to heal and support and serve and give and and that's nature too nature gives Uh and supports and right provides us plants and and herbs and everything we need so i think your green is just that you just are someone who walks in love and that's a beautiful thing you want to be careful you don't give so much and don't replenish because that's when you do need the pink. So right. I like to think of the heart center as a, our gas tank. And when we give, we drive our, our car and right. we give, 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 give. And then all of a sudden we run out of gas and then we start experiencing issues. And some of those issues move into like breast cancer or lung problems or whatever. And, you know, that's why I always think it's interesting that the breast cancer ribbon is pink. Mm-hmm. And I've never met a breast cancer woman yet that's not the biggest giver in the world. So if you are suffering with anything to do in that area or you have a loved one who is or a friend who is, whatever, you know, give them the compliments and see if they can accept and say thank you. Or if they say, you know, if I said, oh, that looks great on you today. You'd be like, oh, well, I just I just bought it for like two dollars at a secondhand store. And are you are you making excuses for not receiving the compliment? Because that's a good indication if somebody is able to give and receive. And I think as women, we forget that we need to receive to replenish Mm. our gas tank. Yeah. So that's where greens and pinks are a little bit different. So think of green as the balance of giving and receiving and and nurturing and serving. And the pinks are, I need time for me. I need to, what do I need for me today? And especially, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a single mom, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, I have to like have my alone bath time. I need to like light my candles and put on my music or, you know, paint my nails. It's my time. And so what, what do you need to do for your, your time? And that's where the pink comes into play. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So there is a big difference between the pink and the green. It's all love. Just one's external and, and one's internal. (laughs) Think of it that way. And the green is, um, also rooting of some sort, isn't it? Like very rooted in, in the heart chakra. Yeah, I mean, every color is rooted in its chakra for sure. But mm-hmm. if you think of like a tree, for example, with the green branches, it has roots. 
right? And green's the center of all. Like the heart chakra is the center of all. We have three energy centers below and we have three energy centers above. So there's seven in total. So everything comes back to love in whatever way, shape, and form. You can use every color of the rainbow to focus on love. Red is about passionate love. Orange is about playful. You know, um, you could do uh, blue is about connection. And, and violet's the soulmate love. Like you can connect every single color back to love. So green is the center of all, which in the grand scheme of life, that's what we're all trying to do is just give and receive love. We need to do it a whole lot more in a lot of different ways. Well, someone told me that um, in the Hollywood depiction of witches, always dressed in black, Mm -hmm. um, that in fact, witches were never in the old days always dressed in black. Mm. Black was brought in because it encompasses all of the colors. But then I was told that Mm -mm. no, black is a void Uh, of all the colors. And that white is actually all the colors brought together. So Glinda is the good witch. It is. Think of a prism. When you put when you hold a prism up into the light, right? Mm -hmm. Um and Yolanda was talking about uh Schwartzy crystal what are they called Schwartzy crystal thank you for saying it right. When you know when you get that rainbow, okay I have one hanging in my window. Mm -hmm. When you get the rainbow it's like that one crystal emits all seven colors of the rainbow. So white is all colors combined, where black is an absence of color. So when you're into black, I always worry, is the person expressing their emotions? Are they connecting to life, to people? Um, think of the goth trends that were, you know, mm. it's all about, I'm not, I'm not wanting sunlight. I'm not talking to anyone. You don't want to think about me. We wear it for respect, like at funerals, because it's not about us. It's about them. Right. right. So we, it's not, it's not putting us in the limelight, but you have to be careful if you're all black all the time. It really shuts off emotions. It shuts off life. Mm-hmm. So I suggest when people are in any form of career that deals with people to make sure if they love black, because we've been taught that it makes us look slimmer and all the rest, we're one element of color. Throw on some cool jewelry. Wear a neat belt. If you're a man, wear that tie. Do something that says, Hey, I'm alive and I'm approachable. Because if you're all, you take a look, if you listen to a professional speaker and they're all in black, how much do you want to approach them compared to someone who's maybe got that blue tie on or that blue dress? Right. And then they, but they always tell you in those, in the marketing world, you want to go in and make a kick butt presentation. You wear your black power suit, girl, and you rock that man's world in a black power suit and you cannot fail. Mm. And disagree. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to add that red tie. Red's the power color, not black. Or the red socks that I see are so trendy now. I don't know if Trudeau started it. Somebody did mm-hmm. with wearing the colorful socks. Yeah, I don't mind the colorful socks. However, when I see someone sit down on a talk show, mm-hmm. uh, there was this wonderful stylist from the UK, quite a famous guy. And he was on one of the afternoon talk shows one day. And I happened to be at the doctor's office with my kids and there was a TV on. And he was so believable. And I loved everything that he was saying. And he was wearing a a blue suit, you know, not a tailored traditional style Mm because he's a stylist. So it was a little funky. His hair was a little blonde and funky. And then when he sat down on the bar stool like chair to continue his conversation he had these wild and crazy red and orange socks Ah. which was funny for the first 30 seconds okay the first three seconds and then what those socks did was attract my eye physically Mm -hmm. to the socks gotcha and if you have to be attracting someone's attention away from your face and your persona with your socks Wake up, Justin Trudeau. It's not a good thing to do because we need to be looking at your face. Yeah. We need to be hearing what you're saying. We mm-hmm. need to be understanding what you're saying. And if you want to come across as a sincere individual, I don't want to be looking at your socks. <laughs> well, it's true. So then having color up around the actual face is better. Yeah. Because sure you're going to feel more appealing and that you want to connect with that person. So and I mean, you're right about the approachability. You do not feel mm-hmm. like approaching someone in black. And when you see the funeral procession where everything is black. Yeah. It actually symbolizes somehow you get the feeling that you should not be there unless you're supposed to be there. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that interesting? So I, I I always feel if anyone, especially in, like I said, any form of communication, sales, don't wear all black. It's just, it's really simple you to me. You can wear the it's black to be suit, but put the something, 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 something. shirt underneath. 
It's small, but you know what? Test it out. I challenge you. Test it out and see. But you're going to find that people will approach you a whole lot more, especially networking meetings. I'm always interested when I go to a networking meeting and I see a whole bunch of people. And I'm in that industry where it's all about communication. It's all about relationships, right? And they're all wanting to communicate. It's, yeah. it's not like you're in a room of people who don't want to talk to you. Right. I mean, the whole point of being there is to talk to you. <laughs> but take a look at the colors around that room and who do you want to approach? And do you go to approach the person all in black or do you go to approach that person that maybe has something, something in her hair, something on her neck, something, you know, a scarf, some, I, I mean, like something I said, maybe a little bit softer. Yeah. Black can be quite harsh. Right. So just test out your own waters with it. I think half the battle is the awareness. Mm -hmm. When we become aware, then we can do so much more. Well, there's an interesting statistic that says um, in a physiological way, Mm -hmm. people who suffer from depression or who are depressed are drawn to gray Mm -hmm. and various shades of gray. And it really says a lot, doesn't it? That's... Because yeah. gray again is light black in a, in a way. Well, isn't the it? opposite is the orange, which is about the joy. So a lot of people who have trouble bringing joy into their life suffer from depression, and so depression is about looking in the past and usually not healing the past and mm-hmm. and going over constantly too much of what didn't go right and not seeing the joy, you know, the blessings and the curse, but only seeing the curses. So the grays and the blacks would say, "Here's the curse." Here's here's the issues. Um, whether or not you want to deal with them and work on them is the question. But if you want to turn that depression into joy and love life again, you've got to work on your crap, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Yeah. And that's where it all comes down to is that, you know, when we are suffering, it's it's a trigger for us to know that there's something that needs to be shifted in our bodies. Okay. Right? And we've talked about that before. Color is just a tool to help you get there. There's lots of tools. I mean, whether there's you... There's a ton of there's tools. There's tons of tools. And you, you're right. awesome, I think, on the radio to bring these to, to the limelight and show people, whether it's homeopathy or naturopathic medicine or herb, like herbs, anything, right? Essential oils. There's so much out there. Color is another tool. But it's a fun one. So I I just always say to people, like, if it triggers you, then there's something there. It's something about you. If mm-hmm. you're suffering with something, I'm not pointing fingers or saying blame. It's just, what's this about for you? And how do we move forward to get you out of that? Right. Well, we're going to take a little break. And I promise that this time when we get back, we're going to talk about creating a piece of art mm-hmm. to put on your neutral wall so you don't have to go and paint <laughs> your house orange, green, or red, or blue, or purple for that matter. But you can put that on your wall in a different way. We'll talk about Mm -hmm. that when we get back. Thanks for listening and stay tuned to Fresh Waves. Hey, I'm Whistling. Would you like to whistle too? Whistle FM is looking for a few good volunteers. Come and join our team and learn a new skill. We're looking for producers, show hosts, and even people to help out around the station. Learn something new and meet new people. Email us at admin at whistleradio.com or drop by the station behind Stillville Fine Furniture. We hope to see you soon. Hey everyone, this is Lil J. Join me every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern for The Block Party. A two-hour journey of the best in the Canadian underground dance music scene. Featuring tracks and DJ mixes from Canada's emerging artists. From the disco hits of the 70s to the latest dance floor fillers. No lineups or cover charges. It's your weekly free access to the beats that are packing dance floors in Canada and around the world. The Block Party, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on 102.9 Whistle FM. Here we are. We're back in the studio with Angela Dacey. I'm your host, Bren Masson. You're listening to Fresh Waves, and we're talking about color. So now we're going to talk about the fact that we can have a nice neutral house and a nice neutral room if you want. Mm-hmm. You can have a nice bed. What's a good bedroom color? If, you're, if you've got really no issues, mm-hmm. but you don't want to go too wild in your bedroom, you don't want it all pink or you don't want it all fuchsia, you want, you want something blue. Blue, blue, green and nice blue, green color. and blue, green and blue, green and blue. Um, okay, because you don't want to be giving out the love all the time in the bedroom. It's more about <laughs> yourself. But, okay, so we've got these colors. Now let's look at doing a big piece of art. Yolanda just said something that I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. If you want to do a ginormous piece of art, like mm-hmm. we're talking four feet by eight feet, you know, six by eight, mm-hmm. some really massive piece of art. An interesting me- background instead of getting a canvas stretched, which can cost you $500 to get yeah. a canvas that big. You can use drywall. 
Cool. Isn't that interesting? And I do have a friend who um, does big pictures that are for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. So she will say, I need to get rid of something or bring something in. Mm -hmm. And as an expressive arts practitioner, you can go through a ton of supplies. Yes. So she goes to the companies that make the big murals for billboards on highways and things. Ah. And they'll have an end (gasps) that they can't use. That's so exciting. That's Six feet by 24 feet, and it's too small for them, and they're not going to use it again. It's garbage, really. Wow. I she love buy, that. She, she gets for free those rolls of paper, because you can just be a little imaginative. Yep. And cuts off a piece as big as she wants and goes to town Sweet. on her paintings. And these paintings are spectacular. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. They're never a painting of a thing. Mm-hmm. They're about the process of getting to the end result. Mm-hmm. So it'd be really interesting with your background in the color mm-hmm. to actually, first mm-hmm. of all, from a, a, an expressive arts practitioner, from a mm-hmm. practitioner's point of view, I would look at the colors they choose as if those colors are telling me something about that person. Yep. And I think you do the same thing. 100%. So if you sit there and you watch the first creation and the first creation on, it doesn't have to be a massive paint canvas, just a, a large enough that you can actually physically get into this. Yeah. And you put an amazing palette out in front of them and, and say that they can also mix their own colors. Yep. To watch what they choose would be a fascinating study. It would tell you mm-hmm. an awful lot about what. And every person would be different. Absolutely. 100%. Now, would it be prudent to <clears throat> say then that you could let them go to town because that's the mm-hmm. whole process of getting there and then do a second where you, Mm -hmm. with the perception of what they just did, Mm -hmm. could introduce them to colors that they might need. 100% too. Yeah, for sure. It says so much about them. So definitely. And if the people are picking out those colors, like sometimes I like to say, you know, those coloring books that are really popular right now? Mm -hmm. Well, grab one, but pick three colors and only work with three colors and see what happens. Because that energy is what you need. So you're saying the same kind of thing right. with those bills, which I think is great. And make your own coloring book, by the way. I have a real yeah. thing with that coloring book. <laughs> I know, um, I know. You know, it's like reading the last chapter of a book first. The poesis, it's about poesis, which is the process of getting to an end result. So don't yeah. already have the butterfly. You may not want a butterfly. Yeah. And your butterfly may warp into a dragonfly, which may warp into something completely That's true. different. So... Giving yourself the end result all the time is, to me, mm-hmm. the, the most basic way of playing with color. Get a plain sketchbook if you need to. Go to the dollar store. They're a yep. buck. And you yep. get them in all shapes and sizes. Go to town. Yeah. And buy one of those. Like I'm A big thing I like to do is say, go buy the 64 crayons from Crayola. Yes. Do you remember that with a little sharpener on the side? They were yep. my favorite. And what three colors jump out at you? There's 64 colors to choose from there. What mm. three jump out? And don't second guess yourself. Just pull. And then... Doodle with them. Draw with them. Like you must know too from doing all the artwork. You know, just see what happens. Use them for a day. Write down your phone numbers or your messages or your grocery list. See what happens. And you'd be pretty amazed at why you pick those colors and what they do for you. And every day may be different and that's okay. But it's vitamins and minerals for the soul. Yeah, vitamins and minerals for your creative soul. Yeah. It's interesting. Um If a person was to pull out those colors, if they already knew all the sort of definitions of color, Mm -hmm. they could pull them out on purpose just to... (laughs) (laughs) Look at me. I'm doing all purple. Well, then close your eyes. I am royalty. (laughs) Then then close your eyes and pick the three. But it's the same thing that you're saying. I think the billboard idea, like going to get a big piece like that is fun. How cool too, to just do that with your kids one day or, you know, I love those art pieces on fences. Have you seen those where they take like a chunk of fence in the backyard and paint like massive flowers across? Oh, I love that. Just to make the garden like light up in the winter time in this lovely Ontario winter, you know, (laughs) it's like, so there's so much you can do, but I think we've been brought up so much to feel that we have to color inside the lines and make everything so specific. And we just don't always have a chance to be expressive, as you know, in the work you do. So just have fun with it. And it's so simple. Like, again, just your grocery list. Pick a color and write your grocery list in purple one day. It's fun. It sounds crazy, but it's like those small little things you can do that actually add some joy in your life, too. Yeah. And the doodlers, they say, <laughs> the doodlers who are doodling during class. Some of Mm. them, if I doodle, I can't pay attention, but the people who are very um, artistic and creative in that way in the visual arts, 
when they doodle, they actually remember what you're talking about yes. more than if they sit there and try to pay attention. Yeah. So, so the way their doodling brains function. is a really cool aspect of it. And then doodle in different colors. Mm-hmm. Doodling in different colors is so much fun. <clears throat> doodly doodly doodly. I have fun talking to teachers because once um, I've taught a lot of classes, like grade threes to grade eights. Um, and it's really amazing when you get teachers that start to say, oh, I could utilize this in my classroom. And you can watch how their classrooms change according mm-hmm. to what they're trying to do. And some some teachers have really embraced it. And it's been amazing. And when I go into back to the schools, like when I even go to my daughter's school, I popped in the other day because it's her birthday and I wanted to take her out for lunch. And I said, hi, Happy kids. Birthday. And all the kids are like, I'm wearing blue today. I still love this. And I'm like, oh, like I taught them in grade three. They're now grade seven. And they still remember the, the the purpose of the color. And I think that's so neat. So yeah. we're also influenced by it. Um, you know, we just have to be open-minded a little bit. And I think we second guess ourselves. And if we just trust, like open your closet in the morning and say, what color's for me? You pick the green. I've got turquoise on today. Yeah. Um, what's Jason got? He's got multicolors. I got, yeah, all colors. Yeah. He's like, he's colors awesome. Today. Rainbow. <clears throat> so, you know, you just trust your gut and you're, when you start tuning in, it's going to tell you a lot. And I love the idea of just have fun painting, throw some color down and see what happens. And then stick that on your wall. And if it's got the colors that you're looking for Mm -hmm. and the colors that you have determined that you need to bring in that energy, yeah, then you can put it on the bed in front of you. I actually saw a really cool application of a painting. It was over the bed. So that when this woman went to bed every night, first mm-hmm. of all, she chose a phrase that she liked. Yeah. She chose on purpose to paint the letters purple. Okay. And then she did the colors that she loved of the rainbow around it. Oh. And it was not a professional painting by any means. Mm-hmm. But it said, live your dream. Nice. And it was over her head. She said every night before she closed her eyes, it was the last thing that she saw. Yeah. She started with nothing. She was living in the, in her car, Mm -hmm. gathering food from the food banks for her two kids. Mm -hmm. Her husband had left. She had nothing. They couldn't get him to pay. And you know, the, the old on and on and on you go about that kind of thing. And she ended up when she passed away, with grandchildren and a lovely life. And she was a multi-millionaire. Whoa, that's wicked. Multi-millionaire. She was giving away her Prada and her Louis Vuitton bags when she, just before she died. So this is a woman who did extremely well for herself Mm -hmm. and worked on herself though. Yes. No, really worked on herself. That's a huge piece of it. (laughs) It really is a huge piece of it. So where do people find out information about this? You know, because sometimes you go and you you talk to Mr. and Mrs. Google and there's all (laughs) kinds of advertisements and people trying to sell you stuff. And you don't, you lose a lot of the credibility. So Mm. how do they get a hold of you? And I've heard that you have a book. Oh, yes, you're right, too. Um, Go to Live Life Colorfully, spelt the Canadian way, livelifecolorfully.com. And actually, when you're on my website, you will see a color quiz pop up. And it's a free color quiz. Take it. And it'll ask you your favorite color, least favorite color, and it'll give you a little description about you. Um, that hooks you up to my newsletter, which I do sporadically, so I don't spam anybody. But you'll also get 10 weeks of free color information. There's lots on my website. I blog constantly colors of the month. Um, there's YouTubes that I've got with like decorating with a purpose, color personalities. There's so much free information. And I do a lot of speaking. And a lot of color training as well, personal development training. So um, keep watch of where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm coming to a corporate event, actually, to do colors for people during uh, a, a barbecue, just to kind of have for some fun, because they saw me at a, a human resource conference with my speaking agency I'm with, and they liked the fact that I could really quickly give them insight. So I do lots of neat things with it. So just go to livelifecolorfully.com, and that'll teach, that'll give you everything. Okay. Well, that sounds fantastic. And the book. I forgot and the book. You, yes. The book. The book, <laughs> the book is the book Live on your website. Yeah, it's on Sorry. the homepage. Okay. Because it is a cool little Thank book you. and then it Good becomes synopsis. like a pocket manual and mm-hmm. if you forget about things, you can always refer to it and it's a nice oh, little guide. Angels. And my angel line. Oh, you have angels. Well, I have my own angel pendant line with a different gemstone to match all the chakra centers. So today I'm wearing white, which is about divinity, but you can, when you know what color you need, you can pick your angel pendant with the proper gemstone in it and then you can wear your angel as well for inspiration and hope and to connect you to the color. 
Now, isn't that interesting? Here we go back. I love the Wizard of Oz. I can I can just do any <laughs> philosophy of life according to the Wizard of Oz. You can. You're um, right. So you've got Glinda, mm-hmm. who is all in white. Yes. With sparkles of silver and blue. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Oh. Yeah. Glinda the Good Witch. Uh-huh. It's about innocence, purity, divinity, trust. So if you're giving someone flowers, if you're giving them roses, for example, <clears throat> yep. I know that there's traditional meanings. The red roses are love. The pink roses are I don't know what. Um, <laughs> yellow roses are... And it's friendship. Yeah, somebody you like, but you don't want to, you know, make it too, <laughs> too much of a commitment. <laughs> too serious. There. You know, that's the beer that I'm going to, if I ever do my own home brewing, I'm going to make a beer specifically for women called Commitment. The beer men love to hate. Um, That's hilarious. I, I know, love it. isn't it? It's mine. You can't use it. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. Um, I don't drink beer, but I think I'll drink that one. Yeah, see, I'm going to market that beer. All these craft breweries that are coming out. I need to partner with somebody. If anyone out there has a craft brewery, let me know. Yeah. We'll partner, and I'll do the marketing and the naming. Okay? That's Alrighty. hilarious. I love it. Um, actually, Carlsberg in Europe has a women's beer, and they market it as a women's beer, and it's got a pink and black label. Ah! That's awesome. Very fun. See, I love this stuff. Okay, so cool. if you're buying the flowers then, you mm-hmm. know, so the white is purity. And that makes a lot of sense because you can... Act, I love white flowers at a wedding. Yeah, I mean, white dresses for the brides. Innocent, yeah. pure, virginity, supposedly, right? But things have changed nowadays, but that's what it was meant to be. Uh-huh. Um, just like the black for the funeral, white for the wedding. <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, you could... With flowers... If you understand color, then you can pick it and and choose them according to what that person needs. Otherwise, just go to what you're attracted to because your body will tell you. You will, you know, when you go to Costco, even I'm going to say Costco, sorry, but they don't have a big tons. box store. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they have tons of flowers to choose from and every color going. Just take a moment and say, what do I need today? And see what you get attracted to. Right. And those are your flowers. And it's the same with your um, clothing, I guess, or yep. if you don't want, you know, if you, if you feel like you are having a day where you need to introduce that green or you need to introduce that pink and it's kind of not in your wardrobe for that day, yep. wear it underneath. You Nobody will too. know, you but it'll t- give you the color that you need in your day, right? Yeah. And nowadays we have tons. I mean, okay. Back when I started doing this stuff, like 20 odd years ago, there wasn't lingerie stores with every color going. Right. Like there was the typical black, white, you know, pink, red. Yep. But now you can go in and get every color underwear and bra you could possibly want. So you can actually use your color underneath as well, which right. is really cool because you're wearing it all day. Right. Perfect. Nice and little sneaky tidbit there to put in your toolbox <laughs> for all you people going oh, out to the world. Yeah. And we're not going to show it on the air, what we're wearing today. But I chose my colors very specifically for today. Uh, anyway, we're going to have to close off the show now because uh, we've run out of time. It goes by so quickly when you're here. I love being here. Thank you. I'm loving having you here. You can keep coming back as often as you uh, like. There's thanks, always guys. something new to talk about and something fun to explore. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you for we having me. look forward me. to seeing you again in the near future. Jason, thanks for all your work behind the board. And My Ivan pleasure. Harris, pleasure. thank you for all your work. And I hope everybody has a terrific, terrific day. Be safe. Make good choices. That's what I always say to my kids. <laughs> You've been listening to Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson, and we'll be joining you again next Wednesday. Have a terrific day, everyone. Oh, what a feeling. Look what we've overcome. Oh, I'm gonna wave away my flag. And count all the reasons. We are the champions. There ain't no turning, turning back. Saying, oh, 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 can't you taste the feeling? Feeling. Saying, oh, 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 we all together singing. Look how far we come now.
colors Waves, a Whistle FM production. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, and our technical producer is Jason Rumball. Tune in every Wednesday at 10 a.m. for Fresh Waves here on Whistle FM, 102.9 on the FM dial and whistlefm.com anywhere in the world. Fresh Waves is available on podcast too. Just go to whistlefm.ca or freshwaves.ca. We podcast all of the Fresh Waves shows so that you can listen at your leisure. Fresh Waves, it really is 